I was 19 and I got kicked out of my house because I was like bringing over six dudes a night. Like it just was never enough. What? Wait, <laughs> six dudes a night? For like a consecutive week, yeah. Would you slot them in like 7 p.m., 8 p.m., yeah. 9 p.m., 10 p.m.? Yeah, yep. Are you uh, using production? No. No? No. Mm -mm. Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Well, 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 as uh, I love to say, how the turns have tabled, how the tables have turned, how turning is turned. <laughs> these women, these women for so long have told men that they're creepy and they don't want to be talked to. And, you know, it's, it's spreading outside in the manosphere. It's not just something that, you know, I read an article about. It's actually something that has hit Twitter. And uh, I've got a thread that's been viewed almost, I think, close to 2 million times where a young woman's like, hey, my friend and all these other women are saying, hey, guy, guys are being polite to us at work. They're talking to us. They, they don't ignore us, but it's always job related. And then when they want to have fun or joke or goof around or have conversations, they do it with themselves. They're not including women anymore. And you guys have seen the meme many, many times where it's uh, some woman sitting at her phone, uh, at her desk uh, um, next to her phone, and a good-looking guy comes around the corner and says, looking good, Susan. And she says, oh, thanks, Brad. And an ugly guy comes around the corner and says, looking good, Susan. And she's picked up the phone and saying, hello, HR. I'd like to make a complaint. Well, guys are wise to this. And again, you, get, you ladies keep asking for this. And, and I swear, you know, I get pushback for saying this, but women in many ways are like children. They throw tantrums. They're very emotional. And they don't think of their long-term actions. They only think of the moment. What's going to get me clicks? What's going to get me likes? What's going to get me validation? What's going to get me attention? And so they complain about men. Men hear this stuff. And then when it comes back around, here we are. I'll, I'll read it in just a second. Uh, a couple things real quick. If you're on Locals, I'm working my way through all the messages you guys have sent me. Please be patient. I will get to them here in the next day or two. Um, and secondly, if you're here on YouTube, make sure to either follow me on Rumble or come on over to betterbachelor.locals.com. We got a great community, lots of threads, memes. I think we've got like 20,000 memes over there now. Uh, we do movie nights on Saturdays, really good time to be had. Um, so we'll jump into the main, uh, well, not the main article, but the main the main thread here. Uh, if you want to follow me on, on YouTube or excuse me, on uh, Twitter, I am at Bachelor Joker. Got about 6,500 people over there now. I make posts all the time about a bunch of different crap. So if you're interested, come follow me over there. Um, this this girl, uh, R-A-J-V-I, Rajvi, I guess maybe. She says, I was talking to a female friend and she was telling me how lonely it is for her to be working with only men in her team because they all maintain a respectful dif distance from her as they don't want to come across as creeps, not realizing it's completely isolating. And, and I'm going to read some of the replies to this, but no, the men know it's isolating. They don't care. They don't want to jeopardize their jobs, their careers, their, their, their good names, or maybe not Maybe they don't have a good name in the industry. Maybe they just don't have any type of name in the industry and they don't want to be associated with bad things in whatever industry they're working with or working within. So they say, you know what? It's not worth the effort. It, even if she's smoking hot and she's super nice and really pretty, a lot of guys are just like, you know what? I'm not going to crap where I work. Like I'm, I'm going to be really careful about this. Um, some of the replies, this Ami Shah, Shah says, I would think in this case, your friend needs to break the ice. And this girl responds, she did that many times. They still continue their behavior. Right. Because again, they, they know it can be used against them. You know, one of the things, I remember a video, um, and, and I don't have it pulled up or anything. You could probably look it up, where kids were offered, I don't remember if it was marshmallows. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's the marshmallow test. You know what? Let's look up the marshmallow test. What the hell? Let's, let's have some fun with this. The Marshmallow Test is a psychology experiment from the late 1960s designed by a guy called Walter Michelle. The idea is you give young children a marshmallow and say you can eat it straight away or if you don't eat it and hold on for 10 minutes, you can get a second marshmallow. It's all about delayed gratification and Michelle said that those people who are good at the marshmallow test went on to have 
more successful lives. Now we're going to see whether the test works just as well with children of our own generation. All right, so, you know, the whole idea, again, <clears throat> now I guess they did follow up. I, I haven't looked really deeply into this experiment. But again, if you can delay gratification, you're going to have a happier life. Now, what does that mean? It means instead of spending money on what you want, investing it. Instead of going out and buying the fanciest thing the minute you can afford it uh, and putting it on credit card, instead of doing that, maybe you save your money, you buy it outright, and then you don't have any credit card debt. Um, you, you make better life decisions. And this is why I say a lot of times that women are like children, because a lot of times they think in the moment and they don't th think of the long-term things that they do. Anyway, I'll <clears throat> if you see a bunch of cuts, that means I just chopped this up and got rid of parts that weren't really relevant and to shorten things up. This will only take a couple of moments. We've got Celia, who's six, and we got B, who is four. I'm going to give you a marshmallow. If you want, you can eat this straight away, or you can wait for a bit until I come back into the room and you'll get a second marshmallow. Okay? I'll leave it up to you. I'm going to leave the room for a bit. So one starts licking it, and then she pops it in her mouth, and she just says, screw it, I'm going to eat it. Now, the other one's been doing a good job holding off. She's been doing a pretty good job holding off. She saw the other one eat it, and she's like, oh, man. She said something. She said something. I don't know what she said. Okay, girls, how did you do? You haven't eaten yours. And what happened to yours, B? Where is it? Well, it's there in your tummy. Is it? So you couldn't wait for another one. So you, as a reward, get another marshmallow. What do you think of that? Tasty. Now, it'd be interesting to see. So the one did a good job in holding off. The other one decided to, to take it, and she got two. It'd be interesting to, uh, if you want to look more into experiments like this. I love looking at experiments like this. But, it, it again, it shows that if, if there's delayed gratification. Well, what are these women doing where there's no delayed gratification? They want a virtue signal that men are bad, men are It's just like the girls that are taking videos of, of guys at the gym that are glancing at them. And they're like, oh... Look at these men, these pigs staring at me as I'm working out. And then it goes viral. And then guys are like, okay, we're just going to ignore you completely at the gym now. That's what's happened. That's what these women have done to themselves. Now, maybe not, not these two women or these women having this discussion, but women in general have done this. You know, for they, a lot of them brought out lawsuits, which is why now managers will not have meetings with female employees alone. They will bring somebody else in to protect themselves. So this Rajvi says, that's exactly my point. Whatever they are doing, it's just to uh, make us feel safer. I hate that there's so much pressure on them to do so. But, well, if a lady's trying to get herself included and she's still getting ignored, then I feel like something has to be said. Okay, so go ahead and say something, but it's not going to change the men's mind. Because then, if a man does do something and maybe she deems it inappropriate or she doesn't like something, then you're in trouble. Uh, she says the objective is to discuss the paradoxical situation. If you think all females are the same, they'll complain about you if you treat them like a human, then it's definitely not true. Keeping in mind uh, where your problem stems from my friend mentioned the fact that they were respectful. Yeah, but here's the thing. Not all men are the same. Not all women are the same. She says not all women are the same. It's not like they're all going to go and tattle on you or, or give you a hard time or get you in trouble. No, but the risk is there. And the risk is enough for most men to say no. And the other interesting thing is, remember, there's a lot of women out there that'll say all men are pigs. All men just talk to me because of this, or all men, the only reason men at work try to do X, Y, whatever. So they'll lump all men together, but then when, when guys are like, hey, women can get us in trouble, well, not all women will do that. It's not worth the risk. You know, we oftentimes joke, joke about, hey, um, you know, if there's a one or two 
M&Ms in a bowl of candy, you know, in 100 M&Ms, if one or two of them are poison and, and you'll end up croaking after eating one, would you try one? The answer is no. Well, what if it's 30% or 40%? That's the divorce statistics. You know, so a lot of guys are just going to say, no, I'm not going to take that risk. This other woman says, Arisha says, uh, been there, felt that. They will not include you in their fun stuff just to not be misunderstood. There's a fine line too, so I get their behavior, but indeed it gets very isolating. Okay, here's a feminist response, right? Now imagine what happens with women in leadership. The Bros and Boys Club is not only real, it's hazardous for your entire existence to have no insider information and never being part of the club. You could have been part of the club, but the problem is that if a guy says a slightly, I don't know, offensive joke that other guys find funny, but a woman might not, you're in trouble. You can be fired. If a guy looks at you the wrong way, he can be fired. And in many cases, women can just complain about something and a guy's in trouble, even if he doesn't even know what he did. And, and she's a perfect example of that. She calls it the bros and boys club. You can hear the venom in her voice already. This Varsha says, how come there's no middle ground between creep and total silence? Are these the only two things? And this guy says, yes. Yeah, because we don't know what it's going to be. We, we don't know how we're going to be judged. You know, I, I might have a woman say, no, we're in pretend land here. Let's not go crazy with this. I might have a woman pre- uh, tell me, hey, I think you're really attractive and you're sweet and charming. I say, okay, thanks. Another woman right next to her would be like, I find you hideous. We, we don't know. We don't know how women are thinking. Well, again, it's not worth that risk. A guy says, a guy named Rush says, wow, I was an engineer working with all men back in the 80s, and it was never like that at all. One of the guys asked, oh, no, this is a woman named Rush. Wow, when I was an engineer working with all men back in the 80s, and it wasn't like that at all. One of the guys asked me out, we've been married for 37 years. Right, because things were different back then, weren't they? Somebody else says, uh, women, don't approach us at work. The gym, the grocery store, the bookstore, the coffee shop, men, okay. Women, no, I'm so lonely and isolated. Why is it so hard to meet anybody? Exactly. Exactly. See, these guys get it. Somebody else says, well, a culture of TikTok videos and others that demonize men even looking for in women's direction, that's the obvious conclusion. The problem is that it's almost always perception of that person rather than the actions of the man. Exactly. Uh, men are human, and this is an account I actually follow. Well, this is the situation that feminists have created. If they don't like it, then that's too bad. It's what they wanted. It's what they got. Uh, let me see if there's any, uh, okay, here's, here's, I'll read one or two last replies. Uh, intellectual or intellectual says we had one girl in our team of 14. All of us tried to keep a respectful boundary, especially since she's the only girl. Always avoided being alone with her in the cabin or in a cabin. So I guess they worked in a cabin. Clearly she feels a bit isolated, but no man wants to risk his career considering the bias women's centric laws. Somebody else, no man wants to have their career in life ruined. It's stacked completely in the favor of women. We'll keep our distance and the women can do whatever they want with their work and life. Just don't involve us men in it. You made your bed. You can damn well lie in it. And, and there's tons and tons and tons of replies like this. Here's, here's one that got liked a thousand times. Women ask for this. Not that you would take responsibility anyway. See, this is the thing. You know, we talk about this stuff and we say, uh, and people come on my channel or, you, you know, or wherever men's channels and are like, oh, you're just a bu- bunch of butt hurt and sell losers who hurt you. No, no, no. This is going mainstream. This is happening to a lot of men and it may not be happening to them directly, but they hear about a coworker or they hear about a guy on the third floor or they hear about the woman in, in HR, even if they work on a construction team. These stories are out there. It's in movies where men are portrayed as stupid, sloppy idiots. The women are the smart, charming ones, and they always have to correct the men and put the men in their place. And men just say, you know what? I'm not into this. Forget it. I'm out. I'm not having anything to do with this. And now women are upset because they're being ostracized. Tough. You can't force a man to talk to you. He can be nice to you. He can be professional with you. But if, if a bunch of guys after work say, hey, I want to go hang out with the boys, 
a company can't come in and say, hey, on your off time, you need to include other female coworkers. No, no, I don't. I don't have to even include male coworkers. I can, I can just self-isolate after work. But if I get along with somebody and decide to hang with them after work, you can't force me to include somebody I don't want to. That's my personal time. See, so companies can't do anything about it. And that way, women can't do anything about it. This is what you wanted, ladies. This is what you've asked for for years and years and years. And again, just like the marshmallow test, they never think of the long-term ramifications of their decisions. They never think of what's to come. You, you got what you wanted. Now lie in it. Uh, guys, if you're on uh, Locals, I will be doing more dating profiles of the day soon. I kind of ran out of them. Uh, so hopefully I'll find some in the messages you guys have sent me. I'm looking around online. I'll have some up here for you soon. Uh, so again, if you're on YouTube uh, or Rumble, make sure to join us on betterbachelor.locals.com for the dating profiles of the day as soon as I can find a couple more juicy, fun ones for you. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.